In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Father, we need freedom on the inside because we can't have it on the outside until we know we're free on the inside. May everyone know God's love and salvation only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. So bless this word to our hearts and may it bear fruit into all of eternity. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, now, we are on, which, which Psalm are we on, Sister Marie? Everybody go to Psalm 42. We've been, we're going to be dealing with being depressed. Amen. Now, in our lives, what takes over our lives is our thoughts. Amen. Now, remember what God said in Isaiah 55. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Now, as the deer, how many have ever seen a deer? I see always a lot of them. Now, remember when a deer gets afraid, it's when they believe they're being chased. When they're being chased, they get all excited and all the water in them comes out. And so what are they doing? They pant and they pant and they pant. And what are they panting for? Living water. When you get depressed, it's, you feel like you're being attacked. But the source of depression is you believe in lies. And so upstairs in your head where the arrows are attacking you, you believe in the lies of the enemy. And it's very difficult for you to believe in God because the lies of the enemy become your reality. Remember I said last week two things. This is real for you. And number two, this is a lie for you. So it's really happening. A lot of times people come up to me and say, can I tell you a dream? I said, all right. Can I tell you this, right? Can I tell you I saw a vision? Do they call them, do I call them nuts? No. They said to me right after, do you believe it happened? I said, I believe it happened to you, absolutely. Now, did it in reality happen? The question is, did, is that really ha happening? It could be or it could be not. But most of the time, we believe the lie. Now remember, God only sent you that which is what? Good and holy. You got that? So look at verse 2. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I become and behold the face of God? A lot of times they see that the deers are dead. And 80% of the water inside the deers are gone. So did you ever see them looking at you? when you see a deer. Did you notice they stare at you a little bit? And then what do they do? They just run. So we can see brothers and sisters that when shall I come and behold the face of God? Because what are they doing? They're running, they're running, they're running, they're running. And so when you keep running, you get thirsty, thirsty, and thirsty. Do I hear amen? Now, when you look at verse 3, my tears, have, this is just review, right? My tears have become my food day and night. When men say to me in complaint, where is your God? When you get depressed, people want to say to you, where's God now? As if to say, stop believing in him. It doesn't work. Now, we can see where is your God in Exodus 15, when the power of the enemy seemed to have all died in the Red Sea episode. But yet the, the question was asked, where is your God? How many believe that God will be faithful to you? How many believe God will be at your side? Now, 
you usually get depressed when a trauma in your life has happened and that spirit of the trauma has overcome you. And then you believe that that trauma is real for the rest of your life. We get depressed when we believe in what we see as results instead of God's results. That's why as a believer in Jesus, you're called to look way beyond what you have seen. Amen. There's a story last night that one young man recovering from drugs and alcohol because of this COVID lockup, two weeks after it started, he committed suicide because he couldn't stand being locked up. And his mother is all upset because um, still she's waiting to have a funeral for him. And what did he do? He believed this was the life. I got to be locked up. I can't stand being locked up. So what happens is your mind does a number on you. The person who had a great attack on the mind was Elisha. He even said in 1 Kings 19, dear God, I'm depressed. So is it a sin if you're depressed? No. It's taking the traumatic experience and you had an open door to it but sometimes with open doors, you can't stop what's coming in sometimes, amen? Like if I could, I would have stopped this corona from coming, but I didn't, it, the, the doors came into all of us. The doors were open. So the enemy is gonna say, where is your God? These things I remember, verse four, I pour out my soul. How many know pouring out your soul? Remember I told you the good point is the Holy Spirit's poured out. In the negative sense, it's evil poured out. Now here's a third sense of pour out. In Hebrew, it means to rain upon real deep. If it was pouring rain with Vincent in Florida today and you stepped out for a second to see, I wonder if it's raining, what would happen if you stepped in the middle of it for 10 seconds? You come in drenched. So what does it mean when you're depressed? When you're depressed, you come back drenched and you are your whole being takes over. You become a different person. You don't feel free. You feel all chained up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You feel all chained up. Amen. Now remember to get rid of your depression. In Zechariah 3, we got to say, may the Lord rebuke you. In Jude 9, we got to know the power of God. It's real life. I told you in verse 4 to stop listening to yourself. Do I hear amen? These things I remember as I poured my soul, I went with the throng and led them in the procession to the house of God. So here I'm pouring out my soul. I'm going to church. I used to go with the multitude to the house of God. But when, when I got depressed, it, it didn't cheer me up. When you're depressed, it's very hard to be cheered up. Sometimes you falsely smile and then you say, you start crying and then you got to go to your room. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You just got to be by yourself because you probably don't want anybody to see you. Now remember, the Holy Spirit will safeguard you. But when you start listening to yourself, when you go to church, what will happen when you go to church? The music will bother you. And what will happen too is church will bother you. You know you want to go to church, but there's a point where you got to say, I want to get out of this. Amen. I want to leave. So how many have ever seen uh, people depressed? And what happens when they're depressed? They just have to exit really quick. They just have to get out. That's a satanic attack on them in the midst of the depression. The attack back is through 
men are not programmed to talk about their feelings freely. The third thing I shared with you last week, which we kind of left off on, is to start talking to yourself. It's your soul. It's your soul. It's your soul. Do you see it right there? Pouring out the soul. With glad shouts of thanksgiving. Do you see it right there? So we're in church. A multitude keeping festival, the hog, H-A-G. And then look at verse 5. Why are you so sad? Now, one thing when you live a life in the Holy Spirit, would you do something when you live in the Holy Spirit? This is one of the hardest things to do. The hardest things to do is don't try to figure it out. out. Don't try to figure it out. Do I hear amen? Yes. God does things and allows things, and we can't figure things out. A lot? A lot. So we can see there, why are you cast down, my soul? Now, everybody underline that. Look at verse 6. Why is my soul cast down? That's biblical way of saying, I'm depressed. Okay, everybody see it? I am depressed. Why are you cast down? Now, the Hebrew word for cast down means you're pushed down. Now, you've got a hope in God. Look, look, look what he says there. Verse 5. Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my Savior and my God. Now, everybody circle the word Savior. This is still review. How many know we're reviewing? This is the time you call God Savior. Now, here's what I want you to do. When you feel depressed, I want you to cry out to God and say, save me. Because the greatest thing that God does is salvation. Amen. How many want the greatest thing God will say to you? Save me. Everybody say that? Save me. Let me give you an example. In Matthew 21, what did they do when Jesus was coming into Gethsemane? What did they do? Save me. Hosanna. What did they cry out? What was their first contact with Jesus with a whole city of Jerusalem? How big was Jerusalem? A quarter, uh, I'm sorry, half a mile. What did they cry out to Jesus? Save me. So recognize who is pushing you down. What's going on when you're pushed down? What's pushing you down? My soul is, what happens when you're being pushed down? Now look at verse number five. My soul is cast down within me, verse six. Therefore, I remember you. Now, I told you there. Everybody look at Mount Miser and Mount Hermon. Remember, just review. Mount Miser is a little mountain. Mount Hermon is the biggest mountain. What is your depression? Mount Miser. What are you going to do? You've got to look at the biggest mountain that God is. So why do you keep growling? Why do you keep groveling? Why do you keep getting down? Because you're looking down instead of at Mount Hermon. So look at Mount Miser. It's a real mountain. It's a little mountain. When you're on the top of Mount Miser, you look up and you see Mount Hermon. That's the tallest mountain they knew. Okay? So what do we do? We go to the tallest mountain there is. Who's the tallest mountain, everybody? God. Now let's break it down a little more. Everybody follow so far? Everybody understand Mount Miser there? Everybody understand Mount Hermon? 
Amen. Are you following? Now, therefore, we, we did this last week. Deep calls to deep. Now, there's, I love this expression, deep calling to deep. When I'm in my, my, uh, my depth of my despair, I am way down. But the farther I go down, the, more, the, the higher up looks. When I look at up and God comes to my rescue, what happens then? How big is your God? Way bigger than all your problems. Because God can reach down and go to the depth of who you are. Call with me, Savior. Jesus, save me. In Psalm 131. Psalm 131. Here's what the psalmist says. So when I'm depressed, I got to go to the point where I need to look up. He says in verse 2, but I have calmed and quieted my soul. Now there's only one person that can quiet you down. Hello, who is it? You. When you are flat out on your bed tonight, just do yourself a favor and look up. Amen. I've calmed and quieted my soul like a child quiet at its mother's breast. Now, notice that all of Jerusalem is called Mother Jerusalem at the breast. We are always taking the milk of a mother. The milk of a mother is how we say in Hebrew, amen. The beautiful thing of the child as I watch my little Max, my great nephew. His favorite spot is on Dee Dee, my niece, right on her breast. That's Max's favorite spot. And as soon as he hits mama, he's out like a light. Amen. So now, as soon as your soul hits the breast of God, it should be out like a light. Isaiah describes that we need to come to God like a mother to be knocked out in all of our pain, knocked out in all of our discipline. When you lay on Jesus, now who laid on, on the breast of Jesus? Do you remember? John. John. Now, let me give you the picture of that, that you can lay on the breast of your Savior. How many need to do that right now? to lay right on the breast of your Savior. When you go to John 13, please. John, the 13th chapter. John chapter 13. When I'm depressed, I need to lay on him. I need to lay on him. Verse 1. Now therefore the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of the world. Now, what happened to the apostles? Now, put a little note there. At this moment, the apostles started getting depressed. Did you know that? The hour had come to depart. See it? Right at that moment, depression started coming in them. That's why after they walked out to the Kidron Valley and get sent, they wound up in Gethsemane. Do you remember that? What did they do? They fell asleep. Amen. Having loved those who has owned the world, he loved them to the end. So now what does John do? When John hears this talk of Jesus departing, when he, when he starts to depart, that message of departing, 
you could write in there fear, anxiety, worry, enter into the apostles. So how many know it feels pretty good that we're all in the same boat, doesn't it? It feels pretty good that someone has to go through what I got. So what happened then is we can see a time when John starts to lean toward Jesus. When he starts to lean toward Jesus, he's, he starts to say there, and also in Matthew 26, when he starts to lean toward Jesus, he is inclined. Inclined means they're not sitting on chairs like Leonardo da Vinci has. He's on the breast of Jesus. Now, how many have ever been on the floor? By the way, if you hit the floor now, it's tough to get up, so be careful trying to get up. When you hit the floor and you're inclined with the person next to you, they're, they're the closest they can possibly be. So John was on to the, uh, I got to give you a depiction of where all the disciples sat on that night. The depiction is a T. Jesus was at the center of the T and down the side were all the apostles. And who was at the top? Peter on one side, John and Judas on the other side. When they went dipping for the food, uh, it was a sign, let me raise up a um, salute to you. John now comes to the breast of Jesus. He's called the beloved, and guess what he hears? He hears the sacred heart of Jesus. When he hears the sacred heart of Jesus, when my little Max hears Didi's heart, he calms down. And guess what happens to him? Like I said, he's out like a light. Because that heart now, and guess what? You can see Max's little head, and he's right on Didi, and he could just hear his mother's heart. What did John do? John, on the breast of Jesus, heard Jesus' sacred heart literally. And guess what happened for that moment? No fears. No fears. So that's why Israel, Jerusalem, has always been called a mother with breast, with the breast, so that we got to come in and calm ourselves down on the breast of our Savior. Do I hear? Amen. 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 And that's what even Ariana likes hugging her mother. And that is her favorite part of all, just to hug mama. Amen. When she's there hugging mama, she feels very, very safe. Do you remember this scene in my favorite movie, one of my favorite Sound of Music? After she got married and the Nazis are following them through and shaking the shaking the, the uh, metal doors and everything else to try to scare them behind the uh, graves. What did she, what did Maria do? Take the youngest child and just hold her, hold her, hold her. Now when you're depressed, you must come into the arms of your savior, savior and savior. You have to with me, do a John, do a John and just hear his sacred heart. Do I hear amen? Amen. Now, when you do this, the way to get out of our depression is to be like a child. Now, this, the, the, this soul starts here throwing, as we look at back with me to 42, the soul starts to do what? It throws a fit. The soul just can't stand living like this. Paul says that um, there are people in the Bible that they call themselves Christians. This is called carnality. How many ever heard of a carnal Christian? A carnal Christian 
is someone who lives the faith or practicing, but they have all the worries of the world. How many have ever met? About a thousand of them. I go to church, I do my communion, I say my prayers, but I'm so worried. Now, that is called a soulless Christian. They have no depth of soul. Paul calls them soulless. A, a way for saying soulless is karna. Now, if I could convince you of one thing, stop living in the world for the world because I need every one of us to be solid citizens. Do I hear amen? Do I hear amen? I need solid people who will really follow the Lord Jesus. Do I hear amen now? Your soul came alive where you get depressed. Your soul came alive at your conception. You gotta get this. This is how you're gonna break all depression. What's point number three? Talk to yourself. Now, why are you cast down? Does everybody understand that? Does everybody understand Mount Miser and Hermon? Does everybody understand that? Okay, everybody get that? The two mountains? Now watch this. I'm gonna give you a definition of soul. Then I'm gonna give you a definition of spirit, okay? Are you ready? A soul, a soul is your personality. Why do you get depressed? Because your soul's been in charge all the time. It's called licking your wounds. Number three, what does soul mean? It means it teaches us to fall in love with ourself away from God. We become selfish. Number one, it's our personality. Number two, it's always been in charge. Number three, it's selfish. So your soul wants to keep you depressed. But we have another part of us, and that's called spirit. How many remember spirit? The spirit is, is the very spot where God made me. God created me in spirit, right? Do you understand why Jesus says you must worship in spirit? And in truth. Do you remember that? Now watch this. Here's how to get out of depression. Your spirits must say this. Your spirit must communicate to your soul and say, a spirit says, I am not programmed for what the soul is dictating. I am not programmed for what the soul is dictating. Now watch this. Who begins really operating inside of you first? Your spirit or your soul? Your soul. Why? Because you weren't baptized at that second you were bo born, right? I'm giving you a very Catholic response. So who starts operating before the spirit? Your soul. Now, look at all the people you know. Please don't think of anybody. Don't they appear very carnal and soulish? Don't they say they want this, that, and the other thing? And because you are men and women in the spirit, you'll say, that's not important. 
but they're operating in the soul and they're open up for depression. Now watch this. I'm going to give you a principle and a Bible verse. And then we're going to give you practicum. Now, what happens is in the Bible, the older, which is older, the soul, the spirit has to be what? Renewed. Everybody following me? We call it being born again. Are you getting this? Jesus said that to Nicodemus. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. Now, what happens is this. The older shall sever the younger. What does your soul do to your spirit all the time? Your soul says, I'm dominating. I'm in charge here. So what happens when you get depressed? Your soul has taken over your spirit. Depression is a spiritual problem. But guess what? Nobody's going to tell you that today. Now, here's the concept. The older shall sever from the younger. So let me show you a Bible verse. When... Um, when I got this, I got all excited. Right now, go with me to Genesis chapter 25. Go with me to Genesis chapter 25. Genesis, the 25th chapter. How many know, I'm glad we can have this session because when somebody's depressed in front of me, how many know I don't have time to explain all this to them? Go with me down to verse 23. And the Lord said, there's two nations are in your womb. Two peoples born of you shall be divided. There's the concept right there. Everybody underline it. The older shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. What does that mean in, in our study now? That means the older the first created was the spirit. That's where God made us. But who dominated is the other, right? So the soul was dominating more because we haven't been what? Regenerated, right? So now this is going to have to say, ready? Here's what you got to do. I'll spell it out very simply. Everybody with me? Am I losing anybody? You have to say this. This is what I mean by talking to yourself. The spirit must rule over the soul. I'll give you an example. There's a baby crying. You just brought the baby back from the hospital. What does your flesh say? I'm tired. So it's two o'clock in the morning. What do you do? Dinner, lunch, whatever you want to call it. Do you stay in bed and wait till the morning? No. You get up. Are you older than the baby? Yes. What are you doing as the older? You're serving the younger. Who was born first? The parent, I think. Then the child. So the parent serves the child. The spirit came first, not regenerated. The soul took over its, its ways and then demands its ways. And now here's what you say. Number one, you've got to say to your soul, 
I rule over you in the spirit. Number two, it's kind of all the same thing. I rule over you in the spirit. One day I left confession. Yeah, I go to confession too. Do I need it? Yes. I went to confession and I had a sin on my soul, confessed. And I kind of stamped my feet outside confessional. And I said, you're over. How many know that sin ended in my life? How many would like to get rid of a sin that's still in our lives? It's your soul dominating your spirit. So when you confess, you say, you're over. Scare the priest out of the confessional. Even if you have to say up above 10 C's above high C. Amen? Second thing, this is all kind of the same thing. The spirit tells the soul to shut up. We in Italian say, stop your Jeep. Do you remember that, sister? So now what you got to do is communicate to your soul, enough. So now you've got to say to your soul, which has gone wild, because this is not God's plan for you. Thirdly, it's, all, it's kind of all the same thing. You must say to your soul, stop that. Now, what happens when there's a nervous woman and you're married? How many have ever seen your wife's cry? And when you they see them crying, you'll say, cut that out. Or they're embarrassed if you start the crying, cut that out. So now, now watch this. Did you see, did you see Genesis 25, 23? Now, this is the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son was living in his soul. When it says he came to himself, it means he went to the spirit finally. How many have ever seen a person change their life? you know of their conversion story, maybe your own. It's when your spirit takes over. And what I want to say to every depressed person, it's time for your spirit to come back. It's time for the Holy Spirit to regenerate you. Do I hear amen? To make you brand new. Are you getting good stuff? Do you see that? So now, with the Holy Spirit's help, got to let your spirit rise in the Holy Spirit. Talk to your soul and say, enough. Now I want you to try it. Look at your sinfulness and you want one sin that's been bothering you a long time. Here's what you do tonight, or if especially you want to celebrate the sacrament of reconciliation, you yell out and say, enough of you, enough. Now, sadly, my mother did something. That's the way she raised me. She said to me, you will never cry. So if you tell me the saddest story or a couple of deaths, I'll feel sad. But you may not see me crying because I've been directed never to cry, okay? I try to force it out. I put three onions in my shirt. And sometimes it, the water just doesn't come. But if it, you're a woman, phew, you got water, honey. You wait. In fact, let me get a drink. That's the deer. What? Panting for the what? The water. Because they've been chased their whole life. Now, point number four. Point number four is very simple point, go to God. Point number four, go to God. Why do I go to God? 
back with me to Psalm 42. Psalm 42. We're learning how to get out of depression. Amen. And we got to go all the way to the end of Psalm 43. Why are you cast down, verse 5, my soul? Look at verse, uh, look what happens now when I start the fight. I got a hope in God. Look at verse 11. Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. Now, listen, when you're in the Holy Spirit, are you all in the Holy Spirit? Yes. Here's what you say to yourself right now. I will praise him. In Philippians 1, the greatest thing you could do, not to go to prayer meeting, not to go to church, individually, the greatest thing you could do is praise God right where you are. And so, now watch this. Look at verse 5. He says there in verse 5, Go down a little bit, verse 5. Notice, notice what happens in verse 5. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Then he says, hope in God, I shall praise him, my help, and my God. Now notice where the my is. Undermine all the my's. My soul. And now he's my help. See the my? See the my God? Okay. Now, it's got to be my God, my centering in him. He's going to take care of my face. He's going to take care of my, my countenance. But I'm going to see what? His face, his help. So now we go down. Um, what, what was David's problem? I used to go with a lot of people, he said in the beginning of verse 42. Remember, you don't have to be in church to go to God. Do I hear amen? Thank you, Lord. I don't have to be in a church to go to God. But a lot of times people run to a church because they got to get to a God. Remember, David was a personal worshiper. I can go into the presence of God right here. And then he says to us in verse 7, Deep calls upon deep. My deepness calls upon the deepness of God. When you have the Holy Spirit in you, it's the Spirit of God praying through you. Now, at the thunder of my cataracts, isn't it interesting they had cataracts back then? All the waves and thy billows had gone over me. Hmm. Something talks about the waves and the billows. Do you remember James chapter 1? The splitting up of all the waves and the billows when we doubt. And then what happens? But the Lord, by day, the Lord commands his steadfast love. All these things are going over me. What happens if waves keep going over me? I think I'm going to drown. When you're depressed, you think you're going to drown. And you run to a doctor for pills to calm you down. By day, the Lord commands his chesed. At night, his song is with me. Now, what does God do? He comes and he sings to you a lullaby. How many think that's kind of beautiful right there in verse 8? At night, his song is with me. Where did I learn the song? I went to the festival in the temple. What's happening now? A prayer to the God of my life. I said, what's the prayer? I want you. I return to you. I want you. I return to you. At this moment, put a little note there by verse 8. There's an explosion of the presence of God. Don't leave your misery until you have the presence of God. The Shekinah. 
I say to God, my rock, there's the sur, S-U-R for rock. Why hast thou forsaken me? How many remember Jesus on the cross? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So here we can see that God's going to sing over me. You see, when Jesus was on the cross, he did nothing but pray. When he was going through the Kidron Valley, walking from the site of the Last Supper to Gethsemane, he did nothing but sing. Does everybody know he sang Mark 14? He sang all the way, all the way to Gethsemane. He sang Psalm 111 to Psalm 118. Then he says in verse 9, Oh God, oh God, I'm under attack. This is what I hear you saying. Pray for me, I'm under attack. You mean the waves and the billows are coming. Go to your rock. Why hast thou forsaken me? Verse nine, why do I go mourning? Because of the oppression of the enemy. The enemy oppresses. Now watch this. I shared with you before the five things that Jesus does for you. In Luke 4, Isaiah 61. And the five, one of the five things that Jesus does for you is to get you out of the oppression of the enemy. How many need to get out of oppression? Now, I believe most of you have been attacked by oppressive spirits. Amen? Amen. Does anybody want to get out of your oppression? Yes. Now, there's another thing bothering you right now. It's called being harassed by spirits. You have been even like Padre Pio. You ever hear my friend Padre Pio? He was even tossed around or St. John Vienna. Don't get that holy because we don't want the devils visiting you. But these guys were super holy people. I know Joseph is a holy person, amen. So if you see him flying above your bed tonight, Maria, call me. And uh, so when you have super holy people, they get oppressed and they get harassed. Now, if Satan can't come into you because you're all living in grace, He's going to try two other methods to knock you out, harass you and oppress you. Do I hear amen? Now, how do I get into the power of the spirit? I must think how great God is. Number two, I must enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. I think about him by praising. If you praise God, sing one of your favorite Catholic hymns. Holy God, we praise thy. You cannot praise him and be depressed at the same time. Amen. So that's why praise is really, really good. I say to my rock, remember, that's the name of God. Why have you forgiven? forgotten me. Why do I go mourning with the oppression of the enemy? Remember, what does the enemy always want to do to you? What does always mean? Always. You are, un when you say to me, sister, and sister says it over there, I'm under attack. I'm under attack. I said, you know what I say to them? Forgive me. Welcome to life. You'll be always under, he chose our inheritance. Okay, God, God is spectacular. As with a deadly wound in the body. Look at verse number 10. See verse 10? So what's your deadly wounds? Now, this is a wound that you can't go to a doctor for because the doctor will say, I don't see anything. I have a lot of people come up to me and say, pray for my health. They said, I went to the doctor. What does the doctor say? How many have ever heard of this a million times? 
I did every test. There's nothing ro wrong with you. How many have ever been through that? Nothing is wrong with you. You know what it is? The doctor should hire me. You know what it is? You're being oppressed and you're being harassed. You know what it is? Your soul is taking over. Your spirit hasn't risen to say, the elder shall serve the younger. It's the story of Isaac with the story of Ishmael. Who was born first, Ishmael or Yitzhak? Remember, if you read Genesis 25, our friend got married, what, again, to Hagar Keturah, second marriage. Saren already went home to be with the Lord. So what do we have? My adversaries, look, look at verse 10. My adversaries taunt me. When you're depressed, you feel bothered and taunted all the time. Have I ever seen a person, you said you'll pray for them, and you wish them a good day, and tomorrow they're back with the same thing again? How many ever seen them with a repeated, repeated problem? I'm dealing with people with repeated problems. I have people calling me sometimes all night long with the same problem. Right now, I'm sad to say they, they're so bothered, they can't listen to me. They ask me questions, they can't hear me. What I want to do is go where this person is and scream out the evil one that's in her because she's so depressed, she's so down, she's so scared. Constantly, constantly, I'm getting calls. Even today, I got a call, come over. And uh, I said, give me a parking space. I don't know how to do that. I mean, you need a computer. I don't have one. So she's got deadly wounds in her body. Now watch this. When you're oppressed, what does the enemy say to you? Where's God? How come God didn't come and help you? Your praying's not working. And then look at verse 11. Why are you cast down my soul? What does that mean? I'm depressed. Why are you disquieted within me? Does this easily go away? It seems like David's been bothered by it. So who's been depressed? The greatest king outside Jesus, David. Where is your God? Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted? So guess what happens when you're depressed? Your inside is never free. And now, hope in God. Verse 11, what does it mean to hope in God, saints? I trust you, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. And what do you say afterwards? I will praise you, I will praise you, I will praise you, I will praise you. Now, when you're depressed, don't ever, ever be embarrassed to ask for prayer. What needs to be cast off of us is to put your soul in its place. Your soul has gone out of whack and your soul has got to be talked to. How many ever had anybody pray for you to command your soul to be put into to its place. That's the start of how to come out of depression. Do I hear amen? Now we're going to be walking through this in um, some deeper format to really walk through 43 next time. Heavenly Father, there are so many, all of us are broken. All of us have bouts. 
but now we need our spirit to rise up to praise you. And Jesus, rise up in every heart. Don't let them down, Lord. They're too beautiful. Raise them up. Let us stand on your shoulders. In Jesus' precious name, amen.